Okay. Awesome. Well, I'm Erin Seek. I am a uh, glaucoma specialist at Washington University in St. Louis, and I was a 2020 recipient of the Young International Service Grant Award, which they award to five or six outcoming either early residents, um, fellows, or first time attendings out of training that are looking to get involved in international ophthalmology and international opportunities. So we all have our individual projects that we're working on. So we meet quarterly with um, some of the Askris Foundation members uh, and to get a lot of mentorship and guidance on how to uh, start our international ophthalmology career and how to work that into our practices. So our idea behind these interviews is to get our face and name out and also to hear from some people who have been doing it for a while and how um, you're able to uh, incorporate that into your practice and incorporate that into um, how you uh, are humanitarian. Hello, uh, my name is Matthew Thompson. I'm an ophthalmologist in Green Bay, Wisconsin. I've been there for 11 years. I originally did my training at the University of Michigan and the University of Wisconsin. I'm a cornea specialist, and I've been involved in a volunteer project in Haiti for uh, several years as well. Awesome. So um, go over quickly your past and present volunteer efforts. So I, okay, so I wanted to volunteer for a long time in training, and I got hooked up through the ASCRS listserv with a project in Mexico for a couple of years. And uh, I kind of learned the ropes of volunteering there. And then one of my patients actually recruited me to come with a group of doctors to Haiti. And I've been to Haiti probably 15 to 20 times at this point. And over the years, I just got to know more and more of the Haitian ophthalmologists and find uh, opportunities to volunteer there. And since 2017, I've been volunteering at the residency program in Port-au-Prince uh, as one of the attendings uh, to uh, teach the residents cataract surgery and pass on skills. And this year we're starting a cornea fellowship in Haiti, uh, which will begin in December. That is awesome. So it's pretty um, amazing and interesting that this started from just a patient connection. So can you tell me how that patient connection got you to your first trip to Haiti? I actually don't know how she knew about it, but somehow she heard that I had been gone the week before volunteering in Mexico. And uh, she's just a really passionate uh, lady that was not afraid to <laughs> ask me to come volunteer with her, with her group in Haiti. And uh, I started talking. So interestingly, the very next week, I had another patient that was part of the same group. So uh, the two of them kind of ganged up on me and uh, just kept, it kept after me for, for a little while until I talked to some of their other friends and made some arrangements to go. That's amazing. Uh, how does your uh, volunteer work and service in Haiti change from your first trip to now your most recently starting a cornea fellowship? Um, how did that transition happen and what, uh, what steps did you take to, to transition into the new role? So, I made a major change in 2017 when I started working with the residency program and doing education. Prior to that, it was the type of trip where you go down and somehow you recruit some patients that need cataract surgery and you take care of them. And it's great and very rewarding, but I felt like I wasn't really accomplishing a lot in the long term. And like I said, it was through connections of meeting Haitian ophthalmologists and other volunteers that uh, two other volunteers made me aware that the residency program was lacking in attending coverage. And it instantly made sense to me that if I could do something to train the Haitian ophthalmologists better for them to take care of the patients, that that would have a better long-term impact. So instead of going down with the goal of seeing how many surgeries I could do myself, I went with the goal to see how much knowledge I could pass on. And uh, so that's what I've been focused on since that time. Why did you decide? So it sounds like you started in residency having an interest. What really sparked that interest when you were a trainee to get involved in international ophthalmology? Well, for me, the story goes all the way back to when I was in high school uh, or maybe freshman year of college. It's hard for me to remember, but I heard a story uh, from somebody 
and I don't even know what country he was in, but he was telling a story about a person that had broken their leg and had to travel for two days to see a doctor because in whatever country they were in, there just weren't doctors where he was. And I thought, wow, that is really difficult. Yeah. I would like to do something to help that one day. So as a, a young idealistic person, I thought, well, I should go to medical school and then volunteer and, and get involved with changing that situation. And so that's just always been in the back of my mind when making decisions about whether or not uh, traveling and volunteering is worth my while. It's, that's the reason I got into this career in the first place. Mm -hmm. And it started by you just looking on a listserv when you were a resident? Yeah, it, it, uh, there was an ophthalmologist, Jim Sauls, and he's in LA, and he had posted on a listserv that they needed one more volunteer surgeon for a trip they were taking to El Fuerte in Mexico uh, on a particular week. And that was maybe my first or second year into practice. And I was like, well, yeah, why not? And so traveling down there was easy because I, it was part of a group and somebody else had already figured everything out. I didn't have to figure out how to get supplies, where to go to, how to find patients, all the things that intimidated me in the beginning uh, or kept me from planning my own trip. And when I got down there, I also didn't know how to do uh, M6 cataract surgery without a FACO machine, but I was with surgeons that knew how to do that and they showed me the ropes. And now I try to pass that favor on to other surgeons that volunteer, that if somebody's interested in volunteering, but they don't know how to volunteer, if they uh, got in touch with me, we could arrange to you know, basically bring them on a trip where they didn't have to do anything other than show up. Mm -hmm. But I try to teach them, this is how you hit up the various organizations for donations of equipment. This is how you travel. This is how you find the patients. Uh, sort of help them to be able to plan their own trip, two or three trips down the road. That's great. That's great. It sounds like you probably would recommend, you know, young people or young attendings, young residents and fellows, if they're interested in doing international ophthalmology, finding a mentor that can kind of show them the ropes, exactly what you're describing. Is there any other thing, other advice that you would give the young, younger generation that's interested in international ophthalmology? Well, I agree. I would advise finding somebody that's traveled before if you can, because it makes things easier and they can just give you a lot of tips to make it easier. But the other advice I would give is to not wait to volunteer. If it's, I think a lot of people have uh, the idea of volunteering is a dream. Maybe they want to volunteer a couple of times. Maybe they want to volunteer a whole bunch, but they, they know that they want to do it at least once or twice during their career. And I think a lot of people are waiting for the right time. Uh, waiting for, waiting to be established in practice, waiting for the kids to be older. And you'll probably find it very rewarding now. You'll probably find it helpful in your practice. Once you uh, treat patients with the severe burden of disease that you'll see in the developing world, you're going to come back and be a better ophthalmologist now instead of waiting till the last five years of your career. And you just don't know what's going to happen in the last five years of your career. You may have a neck injury and you can't operate anymore, or, you know, you may still be very busy. Life to me seems to get busier every year, not less busy. So uh, I would encourage people to, to, to do it now. It's, it's a, it's a great time. It's like having kids. <laughs> it's never the right time to have kids. So that is great you just have to do it sometime. Yeah, that's really, really good advice. Um, so my last question is, is there any memorable moment or patient encounter that you had that just validates and confirms why you continue to do all of the hard work internationally and in Haiti? Well, the, the kids are really the thing that validate uh, the work that goes on there. So most of the patients I treat are adults, you know, cataracts and cornea disease, but there are children that have cataracts as well. And in Haiti, uh, there's now two ophthalmologists that do children's cataracts. So the situation has improved, but uh, it, it's hard for families to find those ophthalmologists. So to, to, to meet a kid that has cataracts, can't function, uh, and to treat those cataracts and then see the child back on a, on a future trip where he's running around, playing sports and doing everything like a normal kid again, 
it's just really rewarding. It's just a very simple operation, but it just wasn't available. Yeah, yeah, yeah. great. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Thompson. It makes me always, you know, the more I meet people in the international ophthalmology section and meeting people through the Askers Foundation, it just reminds me that if you think about the burden that we have of cataracts, blindness, glaucoma, things worldwide that could be addressed that go untreated, we have a lot of passionate people who are addressing those unmet needs. So you've got Haiti on lockdown with a residency program and cornea fellowship coming through the pipeline. Uh, so it just always gives me um, such a good outlook on life that I think in the next 10, 15 years, international ophthalmology hopefully won't need us as often. They're gonna have their own set of surgeons that can, that can really uh, continue to, to strengthen their own communities. That's the goal. <laughs>